Okay, we are in Kadawa, yeah. um, the boundary between Zaria and Kanu. Yeah. And we're with Professor Abu, um, a lecturer in ABU Zaria and a research person too for Aquasub. So, sir, I don't know, we're going to ask you a series of questions since you've used the Aquasub. Okay, now this is your farm, right? Yeah, this is a trial place. Okay, what did you grow in on this farm? As you can see, this section okay. is uh, the field trial field for tomato. Okay, and the tomato contains different mixture of DAP forty and flow bond. Okay. DAP40 and flowbone contain different quantity of fertilizer in them. And that is why we try to see if we apply different ratio of the flowbone, which one will give a better result. There are even, uh, as a control, there is one complete flowbone. Okay. The other one complete Aquaserb. DAP40. Okay. All are aquasoft. So, when you mix them, you will be able to see, and the flow bond usually retain more moisture than uh, DAP 40. And that is why we want to see at which uh, mixture, at which ratio of the mixture. Okay. Will each of them perform better. Okay. And on the other side, we use a different brand of aquasol, 2K. Okay. And that one do not contain fertilizer. And therefore, we use it to test different rate of fertilizer in combination with the uh, soil water trap called 2K. Okay. And so, based on that, at the end of the day, we would like to see uh, which ratio is giving us better result. Result in terms of yield, in terms of soil water retention, and how efficiently is the crop able to use water. Okay. Um, <coughs> Professor, thank you very much for that. You said that the what I was not giving to this tomato plant for about 35 days yes. and they still um, survived and they are doing very well and as of now they are fruiting. Yeah. So I really want to ask, is it the aqua sub and the flowbond that did this magic or is there any other thing you applied aside from this polymer? Actually, as at the time, we started this experiment, there was some water being released to the fields. Okay. And eventually, when we were establishing the trial, as I said, we applied the soil water traps okay. at different times. And at different rates. Okay. <laughs> and so, if you go to other fields around the environment here, that did not use the soil water trap that we call aquasol. Most of the crop died. Okay. And some that survived are not are yielding very poorly. And so it is the aquasol that was able to sustain the crop for about 35 days, even without water. Because okay. other fields. Uh, the crops in other fields could not survive. All of them died. Okay. So this is the tomato <coughs> and the yield. Yes. Doing very, very well. See how wonderfully it is yielding. Yes. Despite the problem of water stress. Okay. Um, Prof, please, I would like to ask you, how did you apply this um, floor bond and aqua sub? Yeah, we used two different... Uh, methods to apply the floor bond. As you know, 
the quantity of the flow bond that is usually applied per hectare is very small. It's not much. Okay. And therefore, in order to distribute the application uniformly, in, air, in fields where we used uh, fertilizer, we mixed it with fertilizer and sprinkled water so that the uh, flow bone will be attached to, uh, so that the flow bone will be attached to the fertilizer. Okay. And so, as we were applying the fertilizer, we are applying it together with the aquasol. And we uh, make a band around the hole, round bond, in a ring manner, and mm -hmm. applied it round and then buried the soil water trap. Okay, Prof. So, Prof, now you're telling us <coughs> that this soil water trap is really good for plants. and It, it is does indeed good, even as the farmers testified here. Okay, now I want to ask, because I learned that you've actually been doing an experiment on this soil water trap yes. with crops. Has there been any effect at all, negative effect, either on the crop or on the soil? Our experiment went as far as to see how the aquasol will affect the crop, the food we eat. Okay. By trying to see whether there will be some uh, toxic concentration of the product within the crop. But we found nothing that could cause any harm to the crop within the uh, aquasol. Okay. And apart from that, one of the claim of the manufacturers is that the soil water trap has the ability to retain nutrient, has the ability to retain water, has the ability to uh, improve soil condition in terms of re uh, regulating the soil pH close to neutral. And all this claim was tested in the field. And the result was wonderful. The claim was really true. Okay. And it even helps to bind the soil together and retain nutrient to reduce the leaching of the nutrients from the soil. And by binding the soil together, <coughs> it means it has the ability to even reduce soil erosion. Okay. Yes. Um, Prof, I'm going to ask you a very technical question now. Yeah. You know, plants actually get their water from the soil through osmosis, right? Yeah. So, considering the fact that this is a polymer, have you been able to try or test how plants get their water from this polymer? Is it still through osmosis or is there any other means? Yeah, when we, when we say... Uh, plant get uh, water through osmosis. It is a factor of uh, concentration of salt in two locations. Okay. One in the soil and in the plant. Usually water moves from a place where the salt concentration is low, low yeah. to a place where the concentration of salt is high. Okay. And so in a good soil, where the soil is not saline, usually aquasol will only help to retain the water for such continuous movement okay. of water from the soil into the plant because it doesn't add to concentration of salt in the soil. Instead, by applying it in the soil and because of the retention, soil water retention ability of the crop, it reduces the concentration of salt, even in soils that have high salt concentration, that will enable the crop to still be able to draw water from the soil. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, Prof, what is your advice to farmers um, concerning the soil water trap? What are you advising them to do? Actually, this product is a product that is worth patronizing. At least from the testimony of the farmers themselves, they have said that they have seen 
really something that they have, they have never seen. If they have planted their own and their own died, and this one is still surviving and yielding high. Without water. Without, in a period when there was no water for 35 days. Okay. That enough, even without telling them, uh, is something that is worth patronizing. Okay. And assuming that they have not seen it by themselves, based on the results of our trial, we have really approved, we have really proved that this product has ability to retain water and nutrient. And if it is so, every farmer that hears that knows that this is a very good product and uh, is something that is worth trying in their fields. Okay, um, Prof, aside from tomato, um, wheat and um, what's the other one? Cucumber. Cucumber. That you've tried those products with. Have you tried it with any other crop or these are just the major crop you can try the products with? No, the first crop we tried this on is maize. And that is where we did holistic study to know how it improves the soil properties. Okay how it improves soil water retention, okay. how it affects the uh, salt content of the soil, whether it uh, actually adds up to soil uh, salinity or reduces. It is also in that trial that we were able to uh, find out that this product also helps to prevent any toxicity effect in the product that we eat. Okay. So we have done a lot trial on maize besides tomato, cucumber and wheat. Okay. And we have the plan to still try it on maize. I mean on uh, rice. Okay. Mm. So Prof, are you advising that this product Considering your experiments and research, now this product can actually be used for any kind of crop at all. It can be used on any type of crop because most of what it does is to help improve the soil condition. Okay. And therefore, if all crops are produced on the soil, then it can be used under any crop because most of the crops are growing in soil and all soil like good condition it likes good fertility okay it likes water likes nutrient and this is the work that this uh, uh, aquasop does to, re to retain water for any kind of crop to retain nutrient and improve the soil condition okay prof um earlier you said you've tried this product with floorborne and soil water trap um and i know floorborne and soil water trap they are all the same but they are different products of uh uh, soil water to flow bond and uh, dump. Okay. Mm. Um, Prof, I want to ask you, for a farmer who is coming up, um, though I know you're not done with your experiment because you're still harvesting and you've harvested for like two times and then you're still harvesting for the tomato and the, um, the other plants. Mm. Please, I want to ask you, for a farmer that is coming up, are you advising or will you advise the person to miss soil water trap and the aqua sub for any kind of crop at all? Or is there a particular one you want the farmer to embrace? Yeah, actually, flow bond is known to retain too much moisture. Okay. And for longer period, compared to the other types of uh, uh, soil water trap. Okay. And so depending on the crop, some crop from the early stage, they don't like too much moisture. Okay. And if you use such crops that don't like too much moisture, fungal disease may develop and will even prevent the crop from doing well. Okay. And therefore, farmers can go for the other types of soil water traps like DAP 40 or the 2K. Okay. Because they have less water retention compared to flow burn. And so the mixture actually until the trial is over, 
we will not be able to come out with the uh, tell you now the correct mixture that is better for the uh, crops in terms of the yielding and also the moisture retention and nutrient retention. Okay. Yeah. Um, Prof, I want to ask, can you use soil water trap in any kind of soil or um, on a soil that is very fertile with every enabling condition put in place? When you say can you use in any type of soil, as we know, soils that are clay, already they don't have much problem of water retention. Yes. Though, it can be applied even on clay soil by uh, now prolonging the period that you will apply water in the field. If it is clay because you know it retains moisture, then the uh, water application may take long. But okay. in soils that are sandy, for example, you can still apply it more frequent, but it improves the water retention of such soils. Because soils that are sandy are known to have very poor water retention. Okay. And so even in such soils, it can be used. In another word, it can be used in any kind of soil. But for clay soil, you may just apply very little compared to what you will apply on soils that are sandy in nature. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, Prof. You are welcome. Thank you so much. And um, we, we hope that you continue your trial on Aquasub and educate farmers on how to use it and then tell them to buy into the innovation because this is really wonderful. <coughs> yeah, because uh, one thing I want to emphasize is that farmers in most cases find it difficult to uh, adopt technologies or accept new products. Okay. But when it is tried close to their farm and they see how it is performing, their own in most cases is seeing and believing. Okay, sir. And so when this is brought more closer to them, they will be able to uh, appreciate the product more and patronize it the more. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. sir.